head to, uh, we're going to talk to our main man here. It's Gary in Portland, Maine. Hi, Gary. How are you? Hey, how you doing? Great. Uh, how you doing, Bob? Uh, Steve, uh, just saying that I've been listening to your music for years, and I say that uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Thanks. Privilege to talk to you. And I'm uh, just saying that I know you can hold your own on music, and I just uh, turned my girlfriend on the other night to your music, and she usually was listening to cousin music, and she goes, Who is this guy? <laughs> yes, Steve Perry. <laughs> and she goes, Yes. So, so I pulled out all my music collection that you've got, and I just wonder, I know you can hold your own, just uh, in the future, uh, have any in mind that you're going to do a co collaboration with or something? Or? You know, I'm not really sure. I, I really did enjoy working with uh, David Foster and Carol Bersager recently on the Quest for Camelot. I always admired their talent, so that was a, a fun collaboration. And um, So I would like to do more stuff like that in the near future, you know. Gary, thanks for being on. We're going to head to uh, Dayton, Ohio. Oh, you're on Rockline with Steve Perry. Hi, Steve. How are you? I'm good, you? I'm great. Thank you. I just love you so much, and um, I'm thrilled to be speaking to you. Thanks. Okay, I have a question. Um, is music totally fulfilling for you, or do you have other creative outlets? Music is, is like a double-edged sword for me. It's fulfilling, and it's frustrating. Uh, it really comes with a double-edged sword for me. I mean, and it's a love-hate thing that I can't get rid of. It really is. I, I, I'm not pleased easily with myself, and I do have to reach to be pleased with what I come up with. And uh, so that's the struggle and the frustration, but also I, I end up being uh, pretty happy with it. You know, I'm done. You can be describing a lot of things. Yeah, like, I know. Like, like a golf game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying. It really is. It really it's, is, yeah. It's the zen of it. Zen of golf, that's you know, right. the zen of songwriting. Yeah, I keep telling myself that. <laughs> like one in the woods, you know. <laughs> when you have somebody like your friend a moment ago come to you with open arms and play the piano right. part, did the lyrics immediately come to you? That one, that one started coming together pretty quick but John and I did finish it together you know he brought a, a good lyric sense with myself I mean he really really had a great lyric contribution to that song did that opening verse just hit you immediately you know I don't remember I, I think I come to you with open arms and I think that I believe what I say was what came first and then the bridge came later you know Man, that's just such good stuff. You know, we'll be back in just a moment. The first Rockline Remembers, which is brought to you by Stars Movie Channel. Rockline Remembers. Can you remember the year these events occurred? The 10th anniversary of Jim Morrison's death, the three surviving members of The Doors led a graveside tribute in Paris. Bruce Springsteen headlined the No Nukes Benefit concert at the Hollywood Bowl, and Journey released the album Escape, containing the song Stone in Love. Was it 1981, 1982, or 1983? Steve Perry? I don't know. We're talking about it right here. You've got a whole you know, fan base in here. <laughs> holding up one, one, two, or three fingers. I think yeah. maybe one, but like I said, that was a blur. Maybe one, maybe two, I think. Well, I'm going to narrow you down. All right, two. Pick, pick one. Two. <laughs> oh, where was I? I thought it was there. August 8th, 1981. It charted on Billboard magazine. So it probably came out a week or ten days before that. But that yeah. was, that's when you actually charted on Billboard magazine. Well. <laughs> uh, how about if we play Against the Wall? Would you like to hear that? Well, Against the Wall, should I tell them what that is? Exactly. That's the title track of the album that never came out. That was the second song um, uh, after Street Talk, which had O'Sherry on it. Um, and it never came out. Uh, I went back into the Razor Radio record. And then for the Love of Strange Medicine now um, came after that. So it's been released on The Greatest Tits, which is out right now, and this is the title track, Against the Wall. Against the Wall, you know, that's a really good song. Thanks. That sounds good on the radio, too, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the first time I've got to hear it on the radio, honestly. Oh, that's cool. It sounds good. Thanks. Glad we could do that for you. Uh, Los Angeles, here we come. Debbie, you're on Rockline with Steve Perry. Hi, Steve. Hi, Debbie. I was just wondering if you were just planning on being solo or consider going with a scene with any other group. You know, I don't, that's a good idea. I mean, maybe I should join some other band. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now I'm just still writing songs and uh, just doing that and thinking about what I am going to do, just sort of like we're talking, reflecting on the millennium and waiting for 2000 to hit. You can do a song called If You Need Me, Call Me Again. Again, <laughs> yes, I'm ready again. <laughs> What bands do you like right now? Who has captured your uh, I like interest? Kid Rock. I went out and bought that immediately because I liked it. And um, I also was listening to uh, another radio station in town. Of course, I do scan the dial because you won't hate me for that, will you? Can we cut this out? <laughs> <laughs> just hit the delay button. Just, just anyway, this right I was scanning the dial and I ran to the Low Fidelity All-Stars. Yeah. And I liked that song, yeah. you know. 
it's, black, it's called Red Flag, Black Flag. I don't know what it's called, but it's it's so great. Can you pronounce the latest Kid Rock song? No, but I love what they say in there. Ba with the ba. Well, it's, but they <laughs> say something, something about the monkey and all this thing. It's great. Yeah, he's he's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to meet him sometime. You'd like him a lot. Uh, Debbie, thank you very, very much. Uh, you're on Rockline with Steve Perry. Hi, my heart is just like jumping out of my... <laughs> Hi, Sue. How are you doing? I am fine. Good. Oh, it's been so long since we heard your voice. Oh, it's been a long time since I've heard my voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I know you have a lot of different favorite singers, but and you sang with tons of different people. Yeah. Is there anyone that you haven't sang with that you'd like to? Oh, man. You know what I really would like to do is, is uh, there are some master tapes laying around of Sam Cooke. And, you know, David Foster did a, a version with Nat Cole and her father. And I would love to do a duet with Sam in the same way that they're able to put it together because of technology. We can pull off those vocal performances and, and sing along with them. And I think it would be fun to do sometime. You have complimentary voices. Yeah, too. yeah. Well, I've, I loved him my whole life. Are you kidding me? First time I heard Sam Cooke, I was in Pismo Beach in my my mother's Thunderbird driving down the, the street, you know, and I heard Cupid come on the radio, and I about died, you know, so my point on. Oh, uh, he did so many great songs. Yeah. I don't know much about history. He was talented. Yeah. Excellent. I still can't remember the song. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't what the good times were. You know when it'll come? It'll come. It'll come at a minute past the top of the hour when we signed off. Yeah. That's when it's going to oh, come. I'll be yeah. on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Sherry, Steve Perry, my <laughs> son rock line tonight. Now, how can you resist? You got that, like that nighttime voice, you know. Yeah, but I work afternoons. Yeah. I know, but you should do like the midnight to like three shift going love songs with Bob. That's right, yeah. yeah. This is Bob Coburn. Here we go on rock line on the JMFM network. And the next call is Trisha from Philadelphia. Hi, Trisha, how are you? I'm good, how are you? We're Hi, great. Trisha. Hi, Steve, how are you? I'm good. Um, I just wanted to know what's the weirdest thing a fan ever did to you or for you? Oh, God. Two of you or four? Let's leave the two of you off. <laughs> the four of you. Gosh, I don't know. You know, there's been some strange things. The flowers. When I did the solo tour, I'd forgotten what used to happen when I was on tour with Journey. Uh, I did the solo tour about uh, 94, 95, and the flowers that would show up and be thrown on stage, I, I mean, I'd walk off with an armload of flowers. And it, it wasn't weird. It was just great. It was just one of the wonderful things. Now, you mentioned off the air that some people have sent things over the years to yeah. offices and everything, and you've got quilts. i got quilts. Yeah, I get all kinds of uh, handmade quilts, and a lot of them line my studio, and uh, they're on the walls because they look nice, and they, they're great sound absorbers. So, uh, so I got that stuff. Yeah, one one specifically is the uh, cover of uh, "For the Love of Strange Medicine." It's really nice. Really? Somebody did the cover? They did the cover, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. very nice quote. Trisha, thanks for being on the air. And a reminder, everyone who gets on the air tonight gets a copy of Steve Perry's Greatest Hits. Plus five. Yes, which is out right now. Which is out right now. Yes. Available at your local CD <laughs> store in courtesy of Columbia Records from Rockline. Back with Steve in just a moment. Call us toll-free at 1-800-344-ROCK. Steve Perry with me tonight.